Hello and welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts, the leading newsroom for telecoms and data center professionals. I'm John Max Lehman. Joining me today, I've got Guy Wilner, CEO of iAccelerate and one of Europe's most prominent entrepreneurs in the data center space. Um, Guy, thank you for talking to us. How are you doing with everything that's going on in the world over the last year? Oh, gosh. Uh, I don't know. I'm sort of locked down in London and uh, running <laughs> businesses on virtual at the moment. That's good. I mean, but you, you're running them very well. I mean, you've just announced a huge decent expansion. You had Golden Sachs last year, year before as well, joining you. Um, I mean, there's a lot happening. For the viewers that don't know you yet, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself, where you come from, how you got into the data center space, uh, and then just give us an overview of how Accelerate? Yeah, sure. Uh, so um, I've been in the industry since uh, 1998, um, building data center companies. Started off in Western Europe, um, building across UK, France, Germany, Switzerland. And then uh, we floated that on London Stock Exchange 2006 and sold it for about half a billion to Equinix in 2007. Then I got involved in Terraco in South Africa and um, joined the board and invested there. And we exited to Permira in uh, 2014. I'm still very much in touch with the team. And uh, and then 2010, I started. I was invited by the European Bank to do some work in um, in Russia mm. to set up a data center company there. So we uh, we got that going, and and that's been running since. And then more recently, we started a, a sort of hyperscale campus in uh, in Nairobi, which we're just starting to build. Mm. Mm. That's, that's interesting. And I mean, I think what you just said it actually it's interesting because it sort of explains your background as well, because you're showing Africa and you're showing Russia. <laughs> on each side of the screen. Yeah, um, so I've got my friendly mammoth for Russia and my uh, <laughs> friendly elephant for uh, African elephant for Kenya. So that, that's that's the reason why I have a slightly <laughs> odd background today. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I love it. Uh, but let's focus on the mammoth. Um, I mean, pun intended. Uh, let's focus on Russia now. Um, you just announced what you claim to be, what you claim is going to be one of the largest data center campuses in Europe um, at 200 megawatts. I mean, talk us through the news. I mean, what is the investment like? What's the, the schedule for deployment? Um, anchor tenant, if you want to share your names. <laughs> well, Russia is a very, very big market, but mm. it's a very underserved market. So up until about a year or two ago, there was more data center in Luxembourg than there was in the Russian Federation, mm. um, which if you think, you know, Russia's got the biggest internet market in Europe with over 100 million internet users, then that's slightly, slightly odd. Um, so we started developing in North Moscow on a campus and expanded, expanded, expanded as, as customers expanded with us. But we did need a second location and it took us a long time to find something that was, uh, you know, clean with proper cadastral records and environment and all that sort of stuff. Because it's, it's more difficult when you're in a, in, a, in a sort of more interesting market like Russia. Um, so securing clean property title, all, all the environmental checks and et cetera. Uh, it took us a long time. It took us about three years to find a, a decent uh, campus. And it just so happens that the campus that we found was the old brewery for FS uh, Beer in Russia. And the brewery had only been built in something like 1996, 97. So it's quite a recent uh, construction. And it's, it's a massive chunk of land. It's like a small village. Okay, and when you're planning to bring the first phase online, and I mean, I guess you've already got anchor tenants as well to build such a big beast into the data center figures. Um, yeah, I'm I mean, not. I, I, I've never been so much in the real estate side to get anchor tenants to my businesses. So we have um, at least three customers who are going to roll in there. That's clear, and, mm -hmm. uh, and it looks like we've got one already signed up. So I guess for the first time, I will actually have. Anchor tenants sort of coming in, uh, rolling in from 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 the from the north campus. Um, Can you we're hoping to get something operational by this summer because mm. on the campus we've got some massive buildings. There's one one building is twenty six thousand square meters of warehouse, mm. so we can sort of roll the thirty eight ton trucks in there and, and build out our cool walls and uh, and um, and all the technology from inside. So um, getting moving very quickly for a first small phase, and then we've got. A number of years to build out the rest. Yeah, well, definitely big numbers. They're going to compete with um, the NGD in Wales for sure. <laughs> um, no, that sounds good. But I mean, you've already um, touched on Russia and the opportunity in Russia. But what are the trends do you see 
within the Russian data center space and then even Europe as a whole? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's just typical of any, what you might call emerging market, is in the sense mm. that these emerging markets or whatever, they're already exactly the same mobile penetration as any other affluent market. I mean, I don't think you could classify Russia as an emerging market because their GDP per capita is, is ahead of many European countries. Um, but it's certainly a new market. It's a newly developing market. And the inevitability is there'll be exactly the same amount of data center power processing, whatever, in those countries in the future as there is anywhere else. So we're just sort of going through an equalizing situation now. And that's the same for you know many, many other countries. So if you look more recently uh, at Russia, Ozone, um, it's a big uh, sort of eBay, Amazon type company. Um, so Ozone went on the uh, on NASDAQ in the US, floated on NASDAQ. Their market cap something like $13 billion now. And they're one of, you know, quite a lot more than a dozen um, tech verticals in the internet in Russia. So, you know, Russia's got some very, very big internet companies already. It's got a massive, obviously, retail market. Hmm. Yeah, well, the index being one of the, the biggest as well. Yeah, you've got Yandex, you've got Mel.ru, uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of uh, bunch of these these companies which are not very well known outside Russia, but they do tend to have, you know, 100 million customers. Yeah, tend to have 100 million customers, as you do. <laughs> Just 100 million. That's um, right. But, uh, I mean, another interesting trend, I mean, I don't know if you can call it trend, but we haven't really seen it that much in the data center space, and then in the space of the week, uh, we saw the creation of two. So I'm talking about the SPACs, the Special Purpose Acquisition Company. Um, what's your thoughts behind that? I mean, you're someone that's very involved in the backstage of the industry across the entire continent. So, I mean, what what do you think about it? Or what do you well, know? I think, I mean, every, everybody's being approached at the moment for these vehicles, and it's it's <clears throat> it was a fairly quiet process in, <clears throat> in the US up until about 2019. Uh, and then um, many companies realized this is a, a sort of a quicker route to getting onto an exchange, maybe a quicker route to get companies that hadn't thought about being listed uh, to get onto the market. It's not an enormous amount of money so far. So if you assume there's, there were about 250 SPACs until December, there's probably another 100 since then. But the 250 SPACs, the total money raised is is less than the market cap of Equinix. So the, the, it's not an, it's not a phenomenal amount of money thrown at the these shelf companies yet. But they're they're all sort of one shot companies. It's it's like a it's a trolley service to get companies onto Nasdaq. So it's an interesting phenomenon and uh, it's developing now. You know, you've got Mike Tobin, ex Telecity, who's uh, set up a SPAC, for, uh, ba- but this time based on the Amsterdam Exchange. Um, the UK Stock Exchange, London Stock Exchange is thinking of changing the rules and allowing this as well. So I think it's an interesting moment in the history of tech. There's many, many, many companies that have private equity investors at the moment, which would like to have a bit more freedom, perhaps, and um, and uh, and get out onto the market. So I think the time is good, but we'll see. You know, it, it might well overheat. Yeah, well, we'll definitely keep an eye on that one for the for the remainder of the year and then even into next year. But uh, speaking of the rest of the end into next year, I mean, they're still we're still dealing, dealing with a lot of pandemic um, at the moment. But what are you going to be working on um, over the next 12, 24 months uh, beyond the expansion you just announced? Well, we got a lot. You know, it's a big beast, uh, the Moscow business, as you can see behind me. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's it's we're only doing Moscow. So we've got a few more buckets that we can put capital in. Uh, that could be a little bit moving out west, but maybe moving out regionally east in Russia. Mm. You know, a country with 11 time zones, there's, there's plenty to, to cover. Mm. There's 12 cities with more than a million population, which is more cities than in the US um, with over a million population. So that's mm. partly because it's a very urbanized population. So there's plenty, plenty to do there in Russia mm. to grow that business further uh, and maybe a little bit of m a as well. Um, okay. And then obviously I've got, you know, I've, I'm going to be busy with Kenya because we're just, uh, you know, we're negotiating with with a whole bunch of hyperclouders at the moment, uh, having made our announcement and brought in Frank Hassett from Equinix, who's helping us coordinate the build. Um, it's getting very busy. I can tell. And I mean, Africa is a whole different conversation because it's a very exciting market. 
Um, I think we're going to have to leave that one for another time. But just very quickly, when can we expect to now accelerate data center in the eastern side of Russia? Do you have any um, state in mind? Or Oh, I'd love to do that. I mean, it's, it's, it's <laughs> often the problem with the data center industry is we're so so damn busy satisfying the customer expansion needs that we never really get the time to sit back and get a bit more of a helicopter view and start doing the strategic stuff. So hmm. my dream is this year we actually analyze maybe five cities across east east from Moscow, uh, from between Moscow and Vladivostok. Hmm. And, um, you know, by the end of the year, we've selected three and then we start building next year. I guess that's a, a sensible thing to do. I mean, Ross Telecom's already announced a three megawatt data center in um, Ekaterinburg. So that's, you know, this, this, this needs to happen, not okay. just by Accelerate, but in any sophisticated country, they really need to start building out data center capacity. Yeah, no, it sounds very interesting. And I can't wait to see the expansion happening. <laughs> um, okay, thank you so much for joining us. And um, thank you, our viewers, as well, for tuning in into JSA TV and JSA Podcasts. Don't forget to also check our social media channels. Until next time, happy networking.